So I've been playing around with Svelte a lot lately and I felt way more at home with Svelte than I ever did with React from the perspective of an Angular developer learning one of the cool kid frameworks. So the philosophy and implementation of Angular and Svelte are significantly different, but their APIs and concepts from a developer experience perspective are surprisingly similar. My experience initially reading through the docs was basically, okay, cool, so just like interpolations in Angular. Okay, cool, so just like an event emitter in Angular, uh, just like an async pipe in Angular, just like ng model in Angular, just like observables and so on. This is great because I generally like the way Angular does things. And that's why I've been using Angular for seven years. And it's also great for Angular devs like me who are interested in checking out Svelte because you will almost already know how to use it out of the box. So in this video, I'm going to show you the key Svelte concepts from the documentation that have direct analogs in Angular. But first, let's look at how the high level structure of a Svelte kit project compares to Angular. So the most immediately noticeable difference is that SvelteKit uses file-based routing. So rather than declaring an array of routes with paths that link to components, you instead create components directly in this routes folder. So a page.svelte file at the root of the routes folder will be your default route and one at routes forward slash home forward slash page.svelte will create a route for that component at forward slash home. So whatever the structure of this routes directory is, is what the structure of your routes will be. And so these page.svelte components effectively become what your routed feature components would be in Angular. So what I've been doing with SvelteKit is having most of my components live inside of this routes folder. So just like in Angular, I will create a folder for each feature. The page.svelte component effectively becomes the feature or routed smart component for that feature. And then I have additional dumb UI components for that specific feature inside of the UI folder. And although I don't have it in this specific example right now, any services data access style stuff would go in the data access folder. And if I had additional helpers, uh, utility functions and things like that, they go in the utils folder. So this just brings the same style of code co-location that I use in Angular to SvelteKit. So the components themselves look like this. Again, this is very similar to Angular. The logic goes inside of the script tags. The template is created with standard HTML with some special Svelte syntax again, just like Angular, and the styles go inside of a style tag. So this is a simple dumb component. Uh, a more complex smart component might look something like this. So it's still the same basic structure. I just have some more stuff going on in the logic here. And this component is generally going to sort of orchestrate what is happening with the dumb child components and the data they need. So then we have the lib folder, which isn't actually required, but is sort of a SvelteKit uh, convention. And with the style that I'm using, this is where I'll put any code that is shared throughout the whole application. So in Angular, I would have had a shared folder. So instead of a shared folder, I now just use the default lib folder. And again, I split it up into this NX style data access uh, UI utils style structure. So one of my favorite Angular features, uh, dependency injection, is not available in Svelte, but I haven't missed it too much just yet, but I suspect I might at some point. But instead of injectable services, we can just use normal ES6 modules, which is effectively the same thing as creating a singleton service in Angular by providing the service in root. So you just add whatever logic you want in here and export the things you want to be usable elsewhere and then import those things wherever you want to use them. So if we take a look at this home component again, you can see that I am importing get gifts here from that ES6 module and I'm just making use of the function here. So if you want to use the typical Angular style service with a subject approach, you can easily do that in Svelte by exporting an observable from one of these files. So now let's take a look into some of the lower level concepts from the documentation that also translate quite well from an Angular perspective. The first one is interpolations, which is nice and simple. Uh, if you want to bind to a value or evaluate an expression, you can just use single curly braces instead of double curly braces. Svelte also has lifecycle hooks, most notably on mount and on destroy, which can be used in place of Angular's ng on init or ng after view init and ng destroy. Inputs mostly behave the same. We just export variables instead of decorating them with the input decorator. And the concept of outputs are quite similar as well. Angular uses an event emitter to emit an event up to the parent component and Svelte uses an event dispatcher that we can use in a similar way. The syntax for binding to events is also similar. For example, instead of click, we have on click or whatever we want to bind to. 
If we use the example of updating a counter in both Angular and Svelte, you can see that in both cases, we just update the value directly and the result will be rendered in the template. So the way in which this is achieved under the hood is quite different. Whilst Angular relies on Zone.js to achieve this style of change detection, when Svelte compiles your code, it will wrap each assignment like this in an invalidate method that will cause the template to update. So on the topic of reactivity and change detection, Svelte does actually also have some interesting syntax that is not present in Angular, which they refer to as reactive declarations. So sometimes we want to compute some kind of derived state. So in this case, we have our person object, and then we derive person name from that. So when person updates, we want person name to update as well, but this won't happen by default. To use a reactive declaration in Svelte, we can just do this instead. So now every time person changes, person name will be reevaluated and will update properly. As I mentioned before, Svelte knows to invalidate something when it is reassigned. And this syntax is basically a way to say we should also invalidate this statement as well when this is invalidated. So in Angular at the moment, you could achieve the equivalent of this by using a subject like this. So Svelte offers a nicer and simpler syntax here, I think, but I think there are still strong benefits of using RxJS in Svelte instead of just Svelte stores and reactive declarations, but that's a topic for another video. So if that's a topic that interests you, feel free to hit that subscribe button. So whilst we're not going to talk about the why of using RxJS in Svelte right now, I do want to highlight how easily RxJS integrates into Svelte. For state that exists outside of components, uh, perhaps state that needs to be shared and updated among multiple components or modules, uh, Svelte has the concept of a store. So you can use set and update methods on a store, and the interesting part is that to get the value from a store, you subscribe to it, just like an observable. So what this means is that we can mostly just swap out a Svelte store for an observable, and the standard Svelte syntax will work, because stores and observables implement the same basic API. For example, in Svelte, you can add a dollar sign before a store in the template, and it will handle automatically subscribing to the store to display its value, just like the async pipe in Angular. But we can also just use the same method for automatically subscribing to our observables in the template. So a funny consequence of using the convention of using dollar signs for observable streams is that statements like this uh, either look awesome or ridiculous in Svelte. I'm not actually sure. And another relevant comparison here is that of ng model in Angular and bind value in Svelte. So again, it's the same basic thing. We can use this syntax to achieve two-way data binding. So what is really interesting here is that we can actually use Svelte's binding syntax to next values on a subject as well. So we need to create a slightly modified version of a subject for this because Svelte will try to call its set method, which does not exist on a subject. We want it to call next instead. So we create this extended version of a subject and use that instead. And I got this idea from Tim DeShriver and I've linked to his great blog post on this in the description. So this is probably my favorite pattern that I've come across so far. And I don't think there is really a simple equivalent of this in Angular. So of course I haven't covered everything in this video. So if you want to fill in the rest of the gaps, make sure to check out the official Svelte tutorial. And if you found this video interesting, please feel free to leave a like or subscribe before you go. And let me know in the comments if you do want to see more Svelte tutorials on this channel. All right, thanks for watching and I hope to see you here for the next video.